So, let us now look at microstructure of a hyperutectoid steel. Hyperutectoid means the alloy composition is greater than 0.8 weight percent carbon. So, it is on the right hand side of this 0.8 percent carbon which was the eutectoid steel. So, let us take a vertical line denoting that composition. So, this line represents our hyper eutectoid steel. We saw in the evolution of hyper eutectoid steel that austenite first became alpha plus gamma which means ferrite first formed and that ferrite we call hypo eutectoid ferrite and then the remaining austenite transformed to perlite alpha plus Fe 3 C. Identical situation happens here with the hyper eutectoid steel only the first phase to form first phase to form before eutectoid reaction is now Fe 3 C cementite and not ferrite. So, you, you get pro eutectoid cementite and then you get perlite. So, that is the only difference. So, here also at a high, higher temperature you will have in the single phase field you will have austenite polycrystalline austenite with grains and grain boundaries. But then when you enter this alpha gamma plus Fe 3 C region you will start having Fe 3 C forming. So, at a temperature somewhere there. you have gamma now the amount of gamma which will form first of all remember that uh, the fe3c which forms uh, starts forming on the on the grain boundaries so you will have grain boundaries where Fe 3 C will first form. So, here you have this is original austenite and this is this is Fe 3 C which is forming. Also and then you can finally, here, here also the austenite phase which is there the composition will evolve and it will again evolve towards the composition will evolve towards this eutectoid composition. So, when you will be close to the eutectoid horizontal when we are reaching close to the eutectoid horizontal the remaining gamma will be at the eutectoid composition and at eutectoid temperature. So, it will transform as you know now. So, below the eutectoid horizontal if we try to draw the microstructure. So, you have you have these austenite boundaries I am drawing it in dashed line because I want to cover these with the Fe 3 C. So, Fe 3 C has formed along these boundaries depending upon the amount of Fe 3 C which will also depend on the composition. Lots of Fe 3 C will form so 
I am assuming that there is uh, co composition is such that there is sufficient Fe3C to form along all grain, grain boundaries. So, you will have a grain boundary network of Fe3C, but this Fe3C now using the same nomenclature will now be called pro eutectoid pro eutectoid cementite. or Fe 3 C and the remaining austenite will form into pearlite. So, you will have pearlite forming where whatever austenite was left at 725 degree on cooling will transform into mixture of alpha and Fe 3 C. So, that is per light. If you look at uh, the amount here again, you can calculate the amount of proeutectoid uh, cementite in the alloy and that will be of pro eutectoid i am just writing pro fe3c in short so pro eutectoid uh, fe3c so you will again use a tie line above the eutectoid horizontal the red tie line which i have drawn so if you have a composition c not fe3c is now on the right hand side of this uh, diagram so the left arm is the represent is representing the fe3c fraction so, the Fe 3 C fraction will be C naught minus 0 0.8 divided by 6.67 minus 0 0.8. And generally in a steel, even in the hyper uh, eutectoid steel, it is greater than 0 0.8, but it is not, not much greater than 0 0.8. So, it uh, goes up to uh, 1, 1.2 steels greater than 1.2 percent carbon generally uh, will become too brittle. So, most engineering alloys will ha uh, engineering steels will have up to maybe 1, 1.2 percent steel even if they are hyper eutectoid. So, the numerator is much much smaller you can see numerator will be if for if C naught if C naught is equal to let us say 1 for 1 percent let us calculate. So, this will be 0 0.2 divided by 5.87, 0 0.2 divided by 5.87 which will be a much smaller number. So, the fraction of cementite which will come out will not be too much. So, that is why and they initially come on the grain boundary. So, they appear to be as a network covering the grain boundaries. So, with this we complete the microstructure of steels.